Hello, and thank you for your time. In this video, we will teach you how to respond to an overdose. Drug overdose is the leading cause of accidental death in the United States. Narcan, also called naloxone, is a medication used to treat an opioid overdose. Opioids are prescription medications like oxycodone or fentanyl and illicit drugs like heroin. Opioids can severely reduce or completely stop a person's breathing. This is what we refer to as an overdose. Using opioids with alcohol or medications like clonopin, Ativan, or Xanax increases the risk of overdose. The good news is that increasing use of Narcan within the community has been shown to reduce the number of overdose deaths. By reversing an opioid overdose, Narcan has the potential to restore someone's breathing. In order to make Worcester a safer place, we have developed this video to train you how to 1. Identify someone who has overdosed, 2. Administer Narcan, and 3. Perform CPR. By itself or when coupled with CPR, Narcan can save a life. The first step in helping someone who has overdosed is to recognize what is going on and respond appropriately. Signs of an overdose include falling asleep or loss of consciousness, slow, shallow breathing, choking or gurgling sounds, a limp body, pale, blue, or cold skin. In addition to these signs, check to see if the person is responsive to a loud voice or a gentle shake. You can try a sternal rub. Make a fist with your hand and rub your knuckles against their sternum, the bone running down the middle of the chest. Don't try to make them vomit. This is very dangerous in an unresponsive individual. If they do not wake up, call 911 immediately before administering Narcan or starting CPR. Calling 911 is so important. An immediate call to 911 makes sure that emergency assistance will be there as quickly as possible in order to help with any additional medical needs. 911, what is the nature of your emergency? Tell 911 that you have found someone not breathing. And what's your location? Give them as many details as you can about your location so that help can get to you as soon as possible. Leave the phone on speaker. The operator may want to remain on the phone with you and coach you through the next steps. Once you speak to the 911 dispatcher, administer Narcan. Typically, Narcan is distributed in sets containing two packages, each containing a nasal spray bottle with one dose of Narcan. To administer the first dose, remove the Narcan nasal spray from the packaging. Tilt their head back slightly while supporting their neck with your hand. You will administer the medication into one of their nostrils by pushing your thumb on the bottom piece or plunger of the Narcan spray device. You do this while your two fingers are on either side of the nozzle. It's important not to check or prime the Narcan spray device. Once the plunger is pushed, all of the medication will spray out and you will not have enough left to use. Only press the plunger when it's in the person's nose. After administering the first dose of Narcan, begin CPR immediately. If you do not have Narcan available, begin CPR right after calling 911. We will review CPR in the next segment. Perform CPR for two to three minutes. During this time, the person should wake up or begin to breathe better. If they do, you can stop CPR. If not, you may need to administer a second dose of Narcan using a second spray bottle. If a second dose is required, you will need to use a second Narcan spray bottle. Be sure to remember that you will administer the second Narcan spray into the other nostril. Then start CPR again and continue until they wake up or until the paramedics arrive. Stay with them until emergency services arrive to ensure their safety. It is important that they not be left alone. Some people might feel sick after getting Narcan with nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. If you must leave them for any reason, make sure to place them in the rescue position. For the rescue position, turn them on their side with their top leg across and resting on their lower leg. Do the same with their arm and then place both hands underneath their head. The rescue position provides both support and safety and prevents them from rolling over on their stomach and potentially choking or coughing if they vomit. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR, can be used to help restore someone's breathing. 
CPR involves two main components, chest compressions and rescue breaths. These will be given at a 30 to 2 ratio. That means that after you do 30 chest compressions, you give two rescue breaths. You will begin two to three minutes of CPR immediately after giving the first dose of Narcan. If they are not waking up after two to three minutes of CPR, you will need to administer a second dose of Narcan and continue CPR. To begin CPR, ensure that they are in the correct position. They should be lying on their back and you should tilt their head back slightly and lift their chin. Be sure to examine their mouth and remove anything that they could choke on. Start chest compressions. Grip your hands with interlocked fingers on top of one another over the middle of the person's chest, just over the sternum or breastbone. Use your body weight to perform the compressions. You will deliver 30 chest compressions before switching to giving rescue breaths. When you are delivering the chest compressions, it may be helpful to count out loud so you can keep tally for yourself and others who may help administer CPR if you need to take a break. Chest compressions should be delivered at a rate of about 100 compressions per minute, or just under 20 seconds for 30 compressions. Push down two inches for each compression. Be sure to keep your elbows locked. After 30 compressions, you may begin rescue breathing if you feel comfortable. Use a pocket mask if one is available. If you do not feel comfortable delivering rescue breaths, Continue administering chest compressions at a rate of 100 compressions per minute. To perform rescue breathing, make sure they are lying on their back, then tilt their head slightly back and lift their chin up. This will open the airway. Pinch their nostrils closed and open their mouth. Put your mouth over their mouth to create a seal. Give one breath and watch their chest to observe a chest rise. A chest rise will indicate that the airway is open and air is getting in. Give a second breath and then go back to chest compressions. Each breath should be about one second in duration. Wait about five seconds to deliver the second breath. The ratio of compressions to breaths is 30 to two, meaning that after every 30 chest compressions, you will need to provide the person with two rescue breaths. Continue switching back and forth between 30 chest compressions and two breaths. Continue CPR until the person is waking up or until emergency help arrives. Chest compressions alone are proven to be effective. Doing chest compressions with rescue breathing is most effective in drug overdose cases. If you feel uncomfortable with rescue breathing, it is important to continue the chest compressions. Let's review. Identify an overdose. Call 911. Administer the first dose of Narcan. Perform CPR for two to three minutes, then check to see if they're waking up. If not, administer a second dose of Narcan and restart CPR. Keep performing chest compressions and rescue breathing until they wake up or until EMS arrives. This video is supported by the Overdose Prevention Fund and the Remillard Foundation.